Hey everybody, how's it going tonight? This video is all about updates. Some of the updates are based on viewers' comments. Some of the things I probably should have done in the first place. A little bit of prep work for an upcoming project, and then just some projects that I wanted to do, like this nice little coat rack. And the railing, of course. We needed some railing. Nobody wants to fall off a loft. Well, sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy this video. It seems to stand pretty straight. One of the harder things making spindles out of a tree is making sure that each end you cut is parallel with each other so that it's gonna stand straight. So you kinda gotta adjust the height to compensate for the bend. Now that I got all my spindles cut, I'm gonna take this big slab of cherry, rip it down so that I can have two pieces out of it and make the top rail out of that. This little handheld planer does a great job of making bevels on corners. At first I thought I didn't want a lot of spindles. But that birch looks so nice, I decided I'd cut a few more. All in all, this railing went together quite quickly, and I would say the hardest part of it was actually cutting the spindles straight, making sure that those ends were parallel with one another. Otherwise, it went together quick and it was nice and solid. One of the updates I want to do is I'm going to add a heat shield around the stove. Personally, the walls didn't seem like they got hot enough to me that it, that it wouldn't matter. But, you know, there's no reason not to be safe about it. So, I think I'm going to go right to the top of the wood.
it may work better than cut it as metal, but It's definitely the way to go. For a heat shield to work, it has to have about a one inch air gap. And to get that air gap, I'm using EMT and I'm cutting it down to one inch spacers. The screws will go through the spacers, holding the spacers up and holding the heat shield to the wall. Tina was not a fan of galvanized metal, so she wanted me to paint it. We went with red. It's a high temperature stove paint. I don't know if it needs to be high temperature stove paint, but I figured why not. I'm just painting a few of these spacers for the screws that'll be at the outside. The ones where you'll actually be able to see the spacers. To drill the holes in the heat shield, a couple of panels overlap. And where they overlap, I wanted the holes to line up well, so I clamped the sheets so that they were even along the bottom, and then drilled the overlapping holes. A couple spots on the paint got scratched. You can see where I touched it up. It looked horrible. So I took this back down and put a second coat on it. This job would have been much easier to do if I would have just taken the stove out. I'm in no hurry whatsoever for winter to get here, but I'm definitely looking forward to having a fire in this stove again. So one of the reoccurring comments that I got was that I didn't notch my posts and this place was going to fall down. I had added lag screws to it and I'm pretty certain it was not going anywhere, but I figured I'd add these vertical supports to show people an easy way to reinforce a building if you do have concerns about it. Much easier. Clamps make everything easier. This is pretty hard without it. The 
Another comment I got a lot was that I needed to add fuses, which really seemed like a pretty good idea. So here it is, an inline fuse holder. I went with the mini fuses, which should be plenty. When the fuse burns up, it's supposed to glow. That way you'll know that you've got a blown fuse and where. So hopefully this will work fine. Inverter can be unhooked. That. That's got its own fuses. They're all plugged into the bottom of it. Still, they're producing power, so you don't want the positive and negative touching, so I'll just clamp it. This wire runs three light strips. I looked at the light strip package. It said that they're one amp a piece, so if this runs three strips, I'm going to put a three amp fuse on it. See if it works. Cut that out. Strip it. I'm going to put this back on the bottom so we can have lights for the rest of this. Huh, maybe that blew that fuse already. Well, that's burned up. So it's definitely drawing more than 3 amps. What else do we got? Let's try five. Okay, there's five amp fuse. That's three light strips, five amp fuse. So far, so good. Installing these fuse holders is pretty simple. You just sure cut the wire and splice it with some butt splices. Pick the right fuse and you're good to go. This is all the scrap from building the outhouse. I brought that along to burn, and then I'm gonna burn some brush that I cleared for the cabin site. Charlie, I wanna burn this. <laughs> This pile of brush is pretty much right in the way. I want to go back into the shade and build an outdoor cook station. No, there's nothing wrong with the roof. I just figure it'll be a lot easier to stain it if I take it off and I don't have to worry about spraying it. I always make such a mess. These pump sprayers are cheap, maybe 12, 15 bucks at the most, and they work great for staining. Stay there, buddy. No.
So I've got this piece of black walnut. It's just a limb piece. My dad had this stuff cut up a couple years ago and gave us a bunch of it. So I'm gonna turn it into a coat rack. I love playing in wood. Sometimes it'll look old and gray and weathered. You run it through a planer and it's just beautiful lumber inside. So, go right to that. Cut there, cut it. that wood grain coming out in there. So pretty. I'm just putting one screw in most of these hooks and then I'm using the other hole to run a long screw through to attach it to the wall. You want to stand back, take a peek before I screw it in? See what you think? Yeah, because if it's a little off, it's going to be nuts. That ladder, too. Yeah. All the different colors. So let me take you on a little tour. This is the living room, kitchen, dining room, heating and cooling room, sitting room. I think that's it. And here's the bedroom. For the upstairs light, I stuck the strip to the wall and it worked out really nice because if you want to lay in bed and read a book, it shines right on your book, doesn't shine in your eyes, really nice for reading.
I've noticed a few white pine on the property that have just died. Not sure if they have disease, but I figured I'd take them out, pull the stumps, and burn everything. Getting rid of these stumps will actually make it nicer to get to my outdoor cook station. This has been a really fun couple days working on the cabin. Got a lot done. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.